Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, uh, we've got another video in our Dry Docking the Battleship series. This is week seven, so our seventh video since we announced that we're going to be taking the ship to dry dock sometime in 2024. And uh, over the last uh, seven weeks, we've gotten the exact same questions over and over again. So this one is going to be specifically answering the commonly asked questions. Some of these are really good questions. Uh, some of them are not. Decide for yourself which is which. So first question on my list here. When? When are we going to take the battleship to dry dock? The short answer is we don't know. We don't have a contract yet. We, we still haven't gotten to that part of the planning process. We know when we would like to go in, when the ship has the least visitation. However, it's all going to depend on the yard's availability. So uh, we are planning on going sometime in 2024, hopefully winter 2024. We don't want to have to push it off any longer. Um, but we do not have an exact date. Many of you guys have been interested in this process ever since Texas went into dry dock. Remember how they weren't able to announce the date of their dry docking until about a week beforehand? No dry docking ever starts when it's supposed to, and it never ends when it's supposed to. That is a problem specifically when there is a ship in dry dock that you've got to go in afterwards. So if that ship gets delayed, your yard availability gets delayed as well. So uh, even when we know an approximate date, I'm going to say, well, yeah, we're, we're going in early January or whatever the case may be, we won't necessarily have an exact date to tell you until the week of. And much like Texas, it may be, yeah, we're, unless something major goes wrong, we're going to go on January 6th or 7th. I don't, just pull a number. Uh, but we'll, we'll announce an exact date or as close to an exact date as soon as we have it. We'll be able to say we're going in January, we're going on this date. If you guys want to come out and watch us, uh, go ahead and do that. As soon, as soon, as soon as we've narrowed it down to according to our contract we're going at this time frame, we will make announcements all over social media. We, we probably have one of the most successful social media presences of any uh, ship, so you will get that information somewhere whether you're watching these videos every Wednesday or you're just doom scrolling on Facebook and, and it comes up. I promise you we will tell you as soon as uh, we know. Where is the ship going to go after dry docking? Uh, we are going to bring the ship right back here to where our pier is, to where the land we own is, to where our visitor center is, where we've already invested in all of our infrastructure and we're going to reopen as a museum. We are doing this because the Navy requires it of permanently moored vessels. We're not doing it because the Navy requires us to go into dry dock so they can take the ship back. Uh, we're not doing this preparatory to taking the ship somewhere else. Um, although I will say, Battleship Missouri, when she was finished her dry docking, they towed her out uh, around Oahu somewhere for filming for the movie Battleship. If Hollywood steps in or, or some other similar situation comes in, we will absolutely take a day or, or whatever it takes and do that if, if there's financial support for it. But at the end of the project, we're coming right back here to our pier in Camden and we're going to reopen as a museum. Uh, the next question that's been really big, will we allow tours of the dry dock or will we allow ride-alongs? This is another one where as soon as we know the answer to it, you're going to see tickets for sale everywhere. We're going to put this out there. Uh, th this will be everywhere. Before we can tell you what our plans are for this, we will have to get permission from our insurance, from the dry docks insurance, from the Coast Guard, from the Navy, from everybody under the sun. Texas didn't start dry dock tours until months after they'd gotten the ship in dry dock. We're not planning on being in dry dock that long, so we are hoping to have this negotiated before we even go in. However, we're not going to overly complicate the negotiation process for our contract to get a slot in dry dock, so we're not going to bring this up until after everything else has been sorted out. If I have my choice, we're going to go by the same precedent that Texas followed, and we're absolutely going to offer dry dock tours on days 
when the dry dock isn't working. If, if this dry dock is seven days a week, we aren't going to be able to do it. If, if they work uh, Monday through Saturday, then we do dry dock tours on Sunday if, if we've got everybody's permission. Um, again, there will be announcement about this all over the internet. Like, you will not be able to go to sleep at night without hearing when we're doing these tours. We just don't know if we can yet. Uh, likewise, the ride-along. There will be no ride-alongs on the way to dry dock. It has been over 30 years since the ship was last dry dock. We are going straight there. Uh, won't be any ride-alongs. Once we have taken her out of the water, we've done a full inspection, we've got a new coat of paint on there, we would absolutely love to have some sort of ride-along uh, back to the pier here. That said, again, there's going to be permissions, coast guards, insurances, things like that, uh, that must be done. And we have to take into account that uh, it will take hours and hours and hours to refill the dry dock and get the ship afloat again. We will have to inspect all of the below water spaces on the ship to make sure there's no water getting in. If there is, we drain the dry dock again and we go back on the blocks. If there isn't, then we can actually start the process. And at this point, we may already be 6, 8, 12 hours into the day. Uh, then we have to tow the ship out. We, we will probably go over the sill of the dry dock at high tide. We'll probably come under the bridge at low tide. We'll probably come back into our berth at high tide. So we're talking about a very, very long day on a ship which may have uh, no or limited power, on a ship that will have no running water, so no bathrooms. So, so there will be complications involved in having people ride along. That said, if we are able to overcome those complications, and again, remarkably low priority given everything else that needs to be done right now, but if we're able to overcome those complications, we will absolutely put tickets out there to ride the ship back. But again, it's contingent on us being able to do it, insurance allowing it, the Coast Guard allowing it, the dry dock allowing it, uh, so I just don't have answers for that yet. And as soon as we have an answer, you will be able to find out anywhere. Uh, another question we've had pretty frequently is the ship has to sit on, it's something like 306 four-ton blocks. So a large part of the bottom of the hull is covered by those blocks. I may have talked about this in one of the earlier dry docking videos. Uh, how do we paint that area? Why are we planning on painting that area? So I have worked on museum ships in the past where to save money, we do not uh, give the ship what's called a bump to paint those areas under there. Navy ship blueprints have three docking positions, and they tend to be like uh, you, you dock the ship here normally, and then docking position two is two feet forward or four feet forward, something like that. And docking position three might be a couple feet in the other direction. And this is specifically done so that you can paint the entire hull. It's been 30 years since the hull was last painted. It will likely be 30 years before it's painted again. So we don't want part of the hull to go 60 years without being painted. So um, our plan is to bump the ship one time. It's called fleeting the ship also. So partway through the project, once we finish painting everything outside of the blocks, we will do that bump. Uh, we'll flood the dry dock again, float the ship forward a little bit, drain the dry dock again. That's a really time consuming and expensive process. And then we'll blast the part that was previously covered by the blocks and we'll put a full system of coatings on it. So that, that is our plan right now. Depending on how much money we raise, we might not be able to do that. Um, the blocking plan calls for two bumps to be able to get everywhere. Missouri was able to come up with a plan when they were in dry dock in 2009 to do it in just one bump. We're going to try and do something similar. We definitely can't afford two, and we may not be able to afford the one, uh, but we're, that's what we're shooting for right now. So we will paint the entire underwater hull. Uh, other questions I've gotten are about the scope of work beyond that. We are just looking at the underwater hull. We're, we're not going to do any work on the inside of the ship. We're not going to do any work on the superstructure. If we really hit our stretch goals with fundraising, we may paint the above water hull. But we can do that pier side. We, we can paint above the water line here at the pier. So we're, we're essentially going to go something like two feet above the water line uh, the, through the splash zone and no higher because it will be cheaper to do it here at our pier, anything inside the ship or anything um, above the water line. We're only doing the stuff that we cannot do pier side. As, as a rough rule of thumb, it costs three times as much to do a project in dry dock as it does to do it in your normal berth. Another question we've commonly got is, are we going to test the thickness of the hull? Yes. Part of our cost estimate is for 
I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, it, it's somewhere north of a thousand ultrasonic shots of the hall at various places. And we know where the issues are. We've talked about this in a number of videos at the bow, around sea chests, around dissimilar metals, around the propellers. Uh, so, and we've got the shell plating diagrams. Uh, actually, they were prepared by John Miano. So those of you who have John Miano's book, um, books, you may already have this information. But we know how thick the individual plates that make up the hull is, thanks to his research and our blueprints. And we'll be able to go through, do these tests, and, and determine how much wastage we have. And if we're seeing excessive wastage, we will absolutely crop out and renew it with new plates of the original thickness or double over it with new plates, depending on uh, the material and, and the type, the way it's fastened. Uh, so we'll, we'll probably talk about that in more depth in a future video somewhere. But yeah, we, we are planning on uh, doing tests of the thickness of the hull. We're also planning on getting aggressive with the blasting. Some ships, uh, I, I've even worked on a ship in dry dock where they didn't want to blast at all because they were worried about punching holes. So they essentially scraped the growth off with a putty knife. We're, we're going to try and get aggressive with the blasting and blow through holes where there is weak metal because it will be 30 years. Uh, and, and so we want to know where those issue areas are. Will the diesels be on? No. Uh, the ship has two auxiliary diesel generators. Each one uh, is rated at 250 kilowatts, uh, basically enough for lighting and a couple of auxiliary motors. We can't run either of them. The cooling water in and out is blanked over. There's some of the sea chests in the bottom of the ship that, that aren't getting water. We will not have running water on the ship otherwise. Uh, there's no way we can run the diesels. The forward one's completely disassembled and, and we couldn't use if we wanted to. We can't even strip it for parts for the aft diesel. Uh, the aft diesel could probably be made to work, assuming we were able to open up the sea chests and, and whatnot, and we're not going to. Uh, we're not even going to try that. Are we going to try and reactivate it by removing the blanks of the sea chests when we're in dry dock? No, I'm not going into dry dock and putting more holes in the bottom of the ship. Absolutely not. So we are not going to remove those blanks from the sea chests. While we aren't running the ship's diesels, will we have power on at all? Yes. Um, it will not be ship's power, but we will have uh, probably a diesel generator craned onto the ship. And uh, I almost guarantee you the Coast Guard's going to require us to have one for emergency pumps and things like that. Now, depending on what they require, we may have no lighting inside the ship, uh, or we may get one that's big enough to power the whole ship. I don't know. It, it will be portable pumps. We do not use any of the ship's original pumps. So really anything we can run power from the generator to, to whatever pumps we need. We have no leaking going on currently, so we're not nearly in the situation that Texas was where they had to have enough power for X number of pumps to be able to dewater a certain amount for them to be able to make it to dry dock. There is less than a 1% chance that we take on water on our way to dry dock and even less of a chance that we take on enough water that uh, we, we would need to do dewatering in the distance between here and there. That said, you always plan for the worst case scenario, so we will have enough power for some pumps, but at this point in the process, I cannot say how much uh, power that will be and if that's gonna power all the lights or just pumps and, and maybe string lights in some of the main parts of the ship. Are we gonna move under our own power? No! No, 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 no. Uh, this ship hasn't moved under her own power since 1990. So we will use tugboats to move her. Uh, again, all the sea chests for cooling water, uh, the evaporators, everything that we would need to uh, power the ship are blanked over, haven't been used. Our contract with the Navy says we can't reactivate the engines. The Navy isn't going to come back on board uh, with a bunch of money that they got from somewhere in the budget and reactivate the engines. We. The museum will never reactivate an engine or a generator. We are going to go uh, under tug power. This will be a dead ship tow like most museum ships have. Again, if you don't think I've given sufficient answer to any of these 10 questions, leave, it, leave a note in the comments that you'd like to see us focus on it in a future video, and we will. Uh, where is dry dock? We're planning on going into dry dock at uh, dry dock number three at the Philadelphia Navy Yard. This one. Uh, New Jersey has been in at least twice before, when she was first being completed at the Philadelphia Navy Yard in 1943, uh, 1942, 
1943, and uh, in 1968, 67, 68, when we're being reactivated for Vietnam. So we have a history with that uh, dry dock. We know the ship fits there really well. Um, that's the one that we would prefer to go into. They're the ones that we're negotiating a contract with. Uh, the Philadelphia Navy Yard is no longer run by the Navy. The original dry docks and facilities there have been taken over by private companies. Uh, so it is um, Philly Ship Repair, which is part of Northeastern Ship Repair, that is running dry dock number three. Some of the other dry docks are run by other companies. Uh, in theory, if things don't work out with them, we could go into dry dock number four. Wisconsin went in there in, I want to say, 88 or 89. Uh, so it could take an Iowa-class battleship. Um, alternatively, we can go up to the Bayonne area or New York or down to Norfolk. Why are we looking at dry dock number three, though? Because it's like six miles away. It is the safest, closest uh, place for us to go. And therefore, it's going to be the cheapest and the easiest. Tug services are not free. Uh, especially with the insurance that would be required for a ship like this. So moving six miles is way cheaper than going, I don't know, when, how, off the top of my head, a, a couple hundred miles north or south to Norfolk or uh, New York or Bayonne. Um, so dry dock number three here in Philadelphia, where the ship was first built, is where we would like to go because it's the cheapest and the closest. And uh, the next question is kind of tied into that. Why are we going into a dry dock, like, like a regular built into the ground dry dock and not a floating dry dock? Uh, I've seen this question a lot and I don't really understand this question. Floating dry docks are always more expensive. Um, Texas is in a floating dry dock, but it's more of like a permanent floating dry dock. So I, I'm not entirely sure where this question is coming from. A floating dry dock needs enough, enough depth under it that the ship can come in and the dry dock can submerge under it. There, there isn't really enough depth here for us. If you're thinking it would be cheaper or easier for us to bring the floating dry dock to the ship, there isn't enough depth here for the dry dock to go down with us in it. So we, we, we can't do it here. Um, so we're talking about, and there isn't one that is closer than dry dock number three. So we're talking about towing the ship further to get to a point where we could use a floating dry dock. Um, it just doesn't make sense for this project. Uh, please do comment below with why uh, you were thinking that a floating dry dock would be better, because many, many of you have been asking this question why we're not considering it. And I, I really don't understand where these questions are coming from. So uh, this was dry dock video update number seven. Be sure to leave a question down below if uh, if you have any questions we didn't cover in this video that you'd like to see us uh, cover in a future update, let us know if any of these questions you want us to answer in more detail. Likely, in a couple of months, we'll come back and we'll do another video where we answer many of these same questions that I wasn't able to answer today. So as um, we find out, well, what kind of diesel generator are we going to need? Uh, what date are we going to go? Will we be allowed to do dry dock tours? We will absolutely come back with uh, videos that answer those questions in more depth. We will let you know as soon as we know. We are not keeping any secrets from you guys. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the dry docking project. We really appreciate it, and your support allows us to do more of these necessary repairs while we're in dry dock. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.